Let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One government, one currency. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Second lesson, Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 3. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Golden text. St. Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to 43. Here another parable. There was a certain householder who planted a vineyard and hedged it around about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husband men and went into a far country and when the time of the fruit drew near he sent his servants to the husband men that they might receive the fruits of it and the husband men took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders refused, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bring it forth, bringing, it, bringing forth the fruits thereof. 
the prophecy of Christ fulfilled. Quote, Beloved, this gospel is a discourse on the fulfillment of the words spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ many years ago. This is by way of reminding the entire world and declaring as a witness the manifestation of the portions of the scripture. The salient questions arising from the parable in the golden text are who were the husbandmen? The farmers. Who cultivated the soil and fenced the farm? Is the farmer not the old soldier? Who for, who fenced round his farm? Who also sent out the servants to carry out the harvest? Who sent the prophets and angels who were beaten, chased out of the farm and even killed? Was it not the owner of the farm who sent in messengers to work for him? The first group were victimized and so were the next. Finally, he sent his only begotten son who was equally maltreated and killed. Even when the Lord told them that he was sent by his father, the people did not believe him. God sent down his begotten son in the belief that the husband men would recognize and respect him. Yet, they did not. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husband men saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. The Lord of Harvest. Who was that son? Was he not our Lord Jesus Christ? Who sent him? Was it not God the Father? Why did he send him? The answer is found in this statement which he said, They will reverence my son. For what reason did the husband men chase away the hair? Their ambition was to claim the vineyard. Who do you think God should have sent after such torture? After such torture, humiliation, and even further threats. A local adage says, when the battle is fierce, the king takes over the command. There lies the answer. This means that the king himself has now taken over the command. Having seen that the battle is really fierce, he is the commander in chief of the armed forces. He has come by himself. Now is not the time for anybody to ascribe the glory and praises of God to any human being, present or past. It is an act of foolishness for a man to thank Olumba, Olumba, Obu, Joseph, Moses, or indeed any of the prophets of old for anything. What were the prophets of old to do? Recall the question our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples after the parable. He asked them, When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? The disciples in one accord replied that he, the owner of the vineyard, would miserably destroy those wicked men and would take away his vineyard from these wicked 
men and earnest and entrusted to other servants who would accurately render the farm yields to him in their seasons. That is exactly what is happening now on earth. Which other person or being is capable of destroying this earth and reorganizing and reconstructing it than the Creator Himself? Spiritual Chorus I have come by myself Sending no one, I will reveal myself to the world. I have not come to die again, as people think. My people sing and rejoice, for I, the Lord, have assumed glory. An everlasting reigning monarch. Beloved, this gospel centers on the fact that this is the reign and glory of the Holy Spirit. Give not this glory to any man or angel, but to the owner, God the Father, who has come by himself, sending no one. He would not have repeated the same mistake over and over again sending messengers only to be chased and killed. This explains the reason why he has come by himself. We should therefore give him his due glory and honor. We should call a spade a spade. A time for God's children to harvest freely. All along People have been calling Jesus, Jesus repeatedly. Yet, violence, hunger, distress and death have not ceased. Our Lord Jesus came and was arrested by the same husband men and nailed to the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples what the Lord of the vineyard would do to those husband men when he comes. By this question, the Lord was invariably informing the world of the coming of the Father who himself is the Lord of the vineyard. Leave vengeance to the Lord. Christ once said that even though God may be slow in his response, yet he never forgets. Therefore. He has this day hearkened to the prayers of the faithful one. In another instance, our Lord Jesus Christ prayed the Father to let his kingdom come. St. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. This is the exact time he prearranged to avenge for his children. This is the reason why Christ advised us to leave vengeance to God. Thus, he advised that if you are slapped on the right cheek, you should turn the left one for the same purpose. He also advised that if a man wants your inner wear, you should give him also your cloak. And if he should desire that you go a mile with him, go to instead. By so doing, the Father will not fail to give vengeance, despite his long suffering on evil deeds. God made it categorically clear that no evildoer will be saved. This explains why he teaches us to refrain from stealing, killing, idolatry, fornication, hatred, division, and falsehood, and from all ungodly acts. He has rather advised that we should be meek, prompt 
in thy payments, kind and obedient. He has promised to take vengeance on your behalf and to destroy the husband men and their lives. On or taking. He has warned you against swearing neither upon the heaven for it is his throne nor upon the earth for it is its footstool. No man should swear even upon Jerusalem for it is the city of the great king. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything short of this, the Lord says, it comes from the wicked one. Today, even Christians swear upon the name of God as a matter of routine. Total power of the Father. Pilate put our Lord Jesus Christ in the dock and asked him several questions. But he never responded at all. Out of anger, Pilate asked Christ whether he did not know that he had power to either release or condemn him. What was Christ's reply? Christ told Pilate that if his father did not give him the power from above, he could do nothing. By that statement, our Lord Jesus Christ bore eloquent testimony about the power of the Father. But today, whom do people testify about? And what do you base your testimony? The Father has come by himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not relent in calling on the Father always. He would mention the Father either at the beginning of his statement or at the end. He made sure he glorified his Father and attributed everything to him. The creation of heaven and earth. It is said that if the housemaid were to know at what hour the thief would come, he would have kept watch. This means that you have to keep watch at all times, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night, at midnight. Who in the world is aware of the arrival of the Father as promised? The same God who sent Elijah of old and other prophets of old, who created heaven and earth, and the fullness thereof, he who sent our Lord Jesus Christ is now here on earth. Is there anyone who knows this fact? Do the rogues, drunkards, smokers, murderers, idolaters, the unfaithful and unbelievers know this? He has come to straighten all the crooked parts and put things aright. Christ said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the Prince of this world is judged. St. John chapter 16 verses 7 to 11. The time of judgment. Now is that time of judgment. He has come to address all the wrongs perpetrated by men. Our Lord Jesus Christ explained to the people that his father sent him, but they did not believe him. The Jews con 
the Jews contended that it was written in their laws that the genealogy of the Messiah could not be traced. Here was a man whose parents was not only known but were assessed and found to belong to the lowest to the lowest class in their society. For that reason, none then and even now believed in the Lord and his word. Philip, one of the disciples, also demonstrated this act of unfaithfulness when he sought the Lord to show him the Father who he so frequently mentioned and they would be satisfied. That was when the Father came through the Son. Now he has personally come down and using no intermediary but who knows him? Magnify his name. Our duty is to glorify him. Be of good conduct. And refrain from all sinful acts. Disputes of the word of God should. Disputers of the word of God should refrain from unnecessary argument and behave well. Because this is the judgment time for all. Evildoers should pray fervently for themselves. Now is not the time to continue to pray God to give you money, food, husband, wife, children and other material things. We should rather be relentless in thanking him and praising his name for his kingdom is here. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This forms the good news of great joy.